Okay. Here we go. Last couple of sections here. Um, we're talking about just a couple of things essentially. We're talking about, well, actually, it's just one big subject, um, which is going to be under the umbrella of what's called Taylor and Court series. Um, this is the first central building block to get to that point, right? Um, but we're going to be finding ways, right, to take functions. Right, and representing them instead of how we typically see them as some sort of power series, as this sort of uh, sum. And because of that, right, notice series are are just polynomials, right? They're just you know C O plus C it, C one X plus C two X. They're polynomials, right? And thinking the derivative and integral of polynomials is really easy, right? So this is going to be a very useful subject for us now. Again, let's kind of start going through these building blocks here. Okay. So to start us off, um, we're gonna get we're gonna introduce something that's gonna be, you know, we call it uh there's a guy on YouTube that calls it the uh the best friend. Um it's kind of like the identity that's gonna be very helpful in translating back and forth these back and forth different things. So last yesterday we introduced just this basic power series, where you have one for C, and then you have just zero, uh, your center at zero, right? We well, said that this type of series was what? What, 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 what is it? The geometric series. Okay, and this so this and we said that this geometric series is going to converge when when was it? Uh, this converges more than just when x equals a, right? Okay, well, it will it will converge when it equals zero, um, but we have more. Well, x is the R value, right? And whenever we're greater than the R value in general, that's going to diverge. Right, because we're past the uh, our convergence point, right? That's the radius of convergence. We can decide it. This is going to converge when uh, the absolute value of x is less than one, right? Remember, in the geometric series, I just need that ratio to be less than one. It's absolute value. Okay. Now, if this does converge, can I find the sum of this? You can. What is the so if I had Um, and I'll write AR to the end, but this is, this, or sorry, AR to the end minus one, but this is, or sorry, N, but this is the same thing as. Yeah, so. I don't want to spell that way, but either case is the same sum. Um, just the off one index. Okay, what was the sum of this? A over one minus R. Okay, this is the geometric theory. So we could write this, we could write it sum, right? Right, well, it's A in this case. It's just one. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, what, is this, what does this mean? What have we just said here? We have just shown that the function one over one minus x is the same as the series from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n power. Now, this is for a specific range, right? This is this is for when the absolute value of x is less than one, but these are the same in that range, which is cool, okay? And more specifically, if I want to kind of write it out, this series, I'll just look at it like this. Remember, this series is the same thing as one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus da, 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 da. So one over one minus x is the same thing as one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth plus the, all the way when at the absolute value of x is less than one. Okay? So this is our first example, and we're going to build off of this example. This is our very first example where we see that 
there is a function, basic function that could be written in terms of the power series. Okay. Now, again, I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna get a different color real fast. I'm gonna write out this formula again. This is gonna be very useful to us. One over one minus x equals sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n power. Okay. Now I put parentheses around x this time. And that's because um this applies no matter what as long as that whatever as long as this thing satisfies its x is less than one condition kind of satisfies that it's within that realm it's supposed to be right then this is going to be true right so let me let me demonstrate a quick example right suppose we have The function one over one plus x squared. Okay, and I want to write this as a power series. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Right, this looks pretty similar to this guy. Not quite though, right? But that's okay, we can fix it real fast, right? The sign, we have a positive down here, we need a negative. So how could I how could I fix that? How could I rewrite? Right, so if I want to have a minus instead, what do I need to add? What change do I need to make? Minus negative. negative x squared. Good, yeah, right? It's negative, negative makes a positive, right? Now, this is in this form. So if I want to write this as a power series, all I need to do is take this guy. Maybe I'll even use a And I'm going to plug it in into that space of the power series. So this, again, as long as this term fits within that convergence area, which isn't going to be as big of a deal right now, but we'll work for that. Um, but this is the same thing using that formula as sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative x squared Raised to the end. Okay. I can even go a step further. I could take that in and take it to that negative one and take it to the two, which is going to leave me with the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x to the two n. So this series, this power series, we just found, is the same exact thing as one over one plus x squared. In when, now again, let me put, be specific, this is when that the absolute value of the x squared or just the negative x squared or the x squared is less than one, okay? Um, they're not as big as that in the example, but just, again, just to make sure this is only true when x squared is less than one, okay? Because obviously, again, let's let's just kind of think to uh, this example real fast, right? If I were to if I were to put um, x is two in here into this, I get one over one minus two, which is one over negative one, which is negative one, right? But negative one definitely is not equal to one plus two plus two squared plus two plus two cubed plus two to the fourth plus two to the fifth, right? That's not a true statement. Okay, and that all comes down to the convergence and divergence. So, you know, convergence. In this case. Um, so we need to be careful. That's in that realm of convergence. This 
So this left hand side is equal to the frame. Okay. Questions for me right now. So far. Uh, do you have to put the negative one? Like uh, when you you wrote this down, yeah. You have to bring that out. Um, all right, so you're asking if you could just like leave it in there. Um, so yes and no. Like, if you choose to leave it in there, then you could not do this split up, right? Because because if I because in order to bring this in, and I can do this both thing, right? So it's it's honestly a lot nicer to write it next to the two in here, right? Um, but if you decided that you didn't want to have this, then you would just have to leave. Although I do think this is a lot easier. So I would recommend you write it, but you don't have to. Any other questions for me right now? Okay. Um, let's see. Maybe we'll do, yeah, let's do another uh, example. Uh, so let me. Let me do, so this is going to be number eight. Look. Okay. And we're going to have f of x. So we're going to do the function f of x equals x over 2x squared plus 1. Okay. I want to write this as a power series. So I want to write that as a power series, right? I need to, again, I want to take this and make it look like this in some way, at least a piece of it. Okay, it doesn't have to be the whole thing, but I want at least like a or And what I mean by that is notice that this X up here seems like it's going to be a real pain. To deal with, right? The that last one didn't have an x up there, but now we do have an x. If it was if it was even just a number, not okay. X, but I do with it. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that x and I'm just gonna set it off to the side for me. So I get this. Okay. Now I want to again make it look like that one over one minus x. This piece, right? Because I have a one up here, so that's good. I've already got that part solved. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to rewrite this as x times one over, and I'm just going to flip the box for now. Right? There, addition is commutative, which means I can switch the order, so it doesn't matter, right? So I just rewrote this to look like one plus two x squared, right? Now, I need to have a minus here, right? So, how should I rewrite this to get that minus? So we get x times 1 over 1 minus negative 2x squared. Good. This is what I want. Okay? So now, I'm going to take this, this guy, and I'm going to rewrite it using the formula over there, okay? So if I use that formula, right, ignoring the x for the moment again, we'll come back to it. I'm going to get what? We have x times the sum as n equals 0 to infinity of 1. Now, just like in that last one, I'm going to take that in. I'm going to split it up. I'd like to be able to get that x by itself, and maybe other pieces. So I'm going to get x times the sum from n equals zero to infinity of, um, and I'll have negative two to the n times x to the two n. Okay, 
Finally, you can split this up if you want to. I don't, I don't want to bother with it much right now. Um, but maybe if you're serving convergence or divergence at some point, it would be helpful. Um, this is the sum, right? So I'm adding a bunch of terms together, right? That x on the outside is multiplying by that sum. So that means I need to take that x and multiply it by each term, right? So what that means for me in this case is I can simply just take this x and bring it inside the sum, right? I can't do that with integrals maybe, but for series, it's this completely fine, right? Again, it's, it's a little bit of a different, I couldn't take the n out of course, but since x is, it works a little bit differently, I can just take this x and multiply it inside. So I have x, and I'm going to multiply it by x to the 2x. What is x times x to the 2x? If I have x to the 2 in, and I multiply it by x to the 1, I get it. Not x to the 2n plus 1. x to the 2n plus 1. All right? You have x to the 2n times x to the 1, 2n plus 1. You just add the power together so you get 2n plus 1. All right? And so this is my this is my series. Okay? This is completely okay. All right? If I have some sort of like function, some x power, something on top that's giving me a little bit of issues. I'm just going to take it at the moment. I'm going to move it off to the side. I'm just going to sit it over. And then I'm going to work on the rest of that to turn it into the power series, right? Because it looks like this. And then once I have that, um, I can take that X and multiply back. Okay, yes. I have a question about the solution. What is the same rate that I want to tell What is the power of this x? One. One. What's the power of this x? So we take two in and we add one. We don't take two in and add n to it, right? Because we don't, when we bring this in, it's not going to be to the n power, it's just to the first power. So it's just two in plus one. Not two in plus n. Right? Just add the two exponents together. Any other questions? Okay, cool. <laughs> now, why is this useful? Um, why is this such a kind of a cool building block of sorts? Well, again, um, I already said this a few times, uh, but I just want to ask to make sure everybody's on the same page here. Power series, right, are always just, you have, you're just adding a bunch of numbers times x to a power, right? So this is just a polynomial. Right? So when I'm taking the derivative, right, of a, of a power series, right? So if I have some function that's equal to a power series, where I have cn x to the n power, right? And I want to know what the derivative of this thing is. All I need to do, right, and, and again, this is equal to c0 plus c1x. Uh, the book kind of does. Uh, tendered at A, so maybe I'll do that. So we get CO plus C1X plus C2 X squared plus C3 X cubed plus X dot. Right? If I want to take the derivative of that function, right, in terms of the power series, then I just take the derivative of each. Oh, sorry. I didn't put X plus A there. Give me a second. C1 X minus A plus C2 x minus a squared plus c3 x minus a third power plus 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 plus. I want to take the derivative of this thing in terms of the power series. It's simply just going to be the derivative of each each term. So I'm going to get so f prime of x is going to be, and I'll take this. What's the derivative of c zero? Zero, it's a constant. We get zero. What's the derivative of C1 times x minus x? 
C1. What is the derivative of C2 times x minus a squared? And then we have 2C2 times x minus a still. All right, we need to have that x minus a term there. And then we're going to get to the first power there. What's the derivative of C3 times x minus a cubed? If you can use, think about using triangles, you just multiply by one. So it doesn't matter. Um, good. Yeah, I'll just up here. Yep. This is simply just sum from a to zero to infinity of, uh, wait, actually, we'll do zero. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Okay, so that's so we take n equals one to infinity of n times c n times x minus a to the n minus one. So this becomes the derivative of this is just that, which honestly you could have just got straight from here, right? But it's good to kind of see it expanded and all, all going right now, right? If we apply that here, right? That's, that means that the, taking the derivative of this guy is way easier than taking the derivative of this guy. Not that this one's too hard, but you know you might have to flip up and think of power. And, um, but this just becomes really straightforward, right? Taking the derivative of polynomials, like especially positive powers or, it's like, or integers, really easy, right? And we can see that here. Similarly, if I integrate, then this is the same thing as I just integrate each term here. So what is the integral of CO? Mm -hmm. Integral of this term. And maybe and maybe uh it's the same it's the same thing just because of the plus C that we that would be added on the end. I'm gonna write this as P of the primes x minus a. Okay. What's the integral of C1 times x minus a? What's the integral of this term? Hmm? So C1 just stays, right? And then if I'm integrating x minus a, right, I can either, you can either just integrate each piece so you get the one half x squared minus ax. In this case, I'm just going to take it as a whole. I'm going to take C1, we're going to have x minus a squared over 2. Okay, this is the same thing, right? If I take the derivative of this, it's still this guy, right? It only affects kind of the plus C term, okay, which we can play around with. So. so the integral of that is C1 times x minus a squared over 2, and we're going to get C2 times x minus a cubed over 3. Plus, and I'll do the C3 term. So we're going to get C3 times x minus a to the fourth power over four, like that. And we can take the derivative of each or the integral of each term, which ends up giving us the sum from n equals one to infinity, or I think we could do zero here. Let me see how they did it. They do it. Okay, so we get n equals zero to infinity of C0, all right, Cn times x minus a to the n plus one over n plus one. Okay. And then um, one last detail that might be important here is, and I'll mark this uh, side. Let's say that this power series has radius of convergence R. Radius of convergence R. Then this, then the derivative and the integral both have the same radius of convergence. So it kind of translates, which is really nice. So that means that within that radius of convergence, 
And not only can I just find the function, but I can also do a derivative and integral, and it's going to have the same radius. It's still going to converge. I can still study the same section of the graph. So this is going to be really handy, right? Again, you won't have to worry about that part. So that's more for real analysis students and class and stuff. But um, for you guys, it's it's you don't have to worry about it. It's just it's interesting. Okay. Questions for me on that? Nor we'll do an example here in a sec. There's actually one I slipped up that's specific to show this here. Anything? Okay. So being able to integrate and differentiate power series really easily is going to make it so not only can I get a power series of functions that look like this, but I can also get power series of, of functions whose derivatives or integrals look like this. Okay, so case in point, this is a derivative of what function? So it's, it's an inverse tangent, right? So I want to say let's so let's find power series of an inverse. Okay. So in order to find the power series of tan inverse, right? What we're going to do is I'm going to recognize first that the derivative of tan inverse is a function. That's really easy to convert to a power series, right? The derivative of tan inverse of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And we found this, this power series, right? It's actually called on the board right there, right? This power series is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n. So if I want the power series of tangent, I want the power series of tangent, all I need to do is, if this is the derivative of tangent, I need to integrate it. So all I need to do is integrate this function, which is going to be the sum, the integral of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2 n. Right? Now, without going into too much technical detail, right, I can safely say, I can safely know that the I can easily just take the integral of each piece here, right? I can just take the integral of each piece of the sum here and get the integral, right? So um, over here was just kind of like a general format to kind of see it, right? But it, but I can just integrate each of these terms as they are, right? Because it's just x to a power, right? I know how to integrate x to a power, right? So this is the same thing as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Again, this negative 1 to the n power is a number, right? Not in any case, so I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to leave that kind of load. And I'm going to integrate x to the 2n. What is the integral of x to the 2n? So this is, so we get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And it's as simple as that, right? I don't have to, if I want to get a power series for tangent, I don't have to, and we'll learn ways you can just get it directly. But using this building block here, I can get it a lot faster. I just integrate what I know. 
in an early environment. And that's going to be it. Okay? Now, here's the question. Am I done with this problem? Yeah, so there's still going to be, there's still a plus A on here, right, technically. Okay? But don't fret. This is going to be really easy to figure out. Right? I want, right, let's just, in order to figure out what that plus C is, right, I need, I want this to be equal to tan inverse. What's a really easy value of tan inverse to find? The easiest one you can think of. If I plug in a number and get the tan inverse, zero, right? So again, we know that the tan inverse of x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 plus c. Just plug in 0, right? I need this to be equal. Let me just plug in 0. If I plug in 0, I get tan inverse of 0, which is what? 0 equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 0 for the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. What is zero to the two n plus one? Zero, right? So that whole sum, right? This whole sum right here is also just zero, right? So I have zero equals zero plus c. So what is c? Yeah. Good. C equals zero. So that leaves us with. This is a file. Right? Now again, the reason why this is important, right? The reason why we're doing all this, maybe you won't use it as much in your particular field, right? But using polynomials is a lot easier than using the traditional function, right? And if I just want approximations of something, right, then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use the polynomial out to some steps. Potentially, I may not have the whole thing, but I might at least use a few parts to get a little bit more computer, plus 10, 11, 11, um, to use instead of the actual function itself. Right? Especially for functions who are, uh, are a lot more difficult. Right? You, you might remember that um, in chapter seven, we learned a lot of integration techniques, but there are still some integrals we couldn't find, right? That we couldn't do. Right? But for all, almost every function can be written as a power series, and I do know how to integrate that every time. So then I can just use that integral as an approximation to build, right? If I don't know how to integrate it. Right? So these are very useful, okay? And again, having this useful building block is good. Um, and then we can use this to get uh, in the next section of working all. Uh, questions? At all. Um, I'll probably do an example with um, where you do the other, where you take a, have to take the derivative instead. Um, or sorry, when you have to take, uh, or instead of, so in this case, we took the derivative and then integrated back. So maybe we'll do one where you have to integrate and take the derivative, just to show you what it was like. Okay, and I can do another example if you want to. Any questions on what's happening here at all? Okay. Oh, all the questions? There's going to be some questions that are just something like this, and then there's going to be some questions that are finding power series of, of things like that. Okay? Doesn't get much crazier. Okay? Cool. Um, yep. So let's see. Uh, which one? So we need one of these. Let's do I've already assigned you to do this point. Uh oops, they're great. So let's take number 18. 
or we're we'll applying the power series representation of a function. And the function in this case that we're going to be doing is um, f of x. And they do cubed. I think I'm going to just go one step down. I'm just going to do squared instead. So we're going to have x ish. Oops, sorry. 2 minus x squared. So I want to find a power series representation of this thing. OK. So I need I need some help for this. I'm not sure if I know where to start. So anybody have any ideas of, or suggestions of what maybe might do first to at least know where to go or I don't know. Isolate the are you saying oh oh gotcha the one on top? Okay. Yeah, so let's that's that's a good idea, right? Because obviously if I want to end up with like one over something minus something, right, to be able to turn into a power series using that building one, right? I need to get that thing off the top. So first, I'm going to take the square, and I'm going to distribute it to each term. So I'm going to get x squared over 2 minus x squared. Okay. And then I'm going to take this x squared on the top. And just like with the other time, I'm just going to kind of set it off to the side. Okay. So this, so now what I'm going to do, right, is I don't want to have to worry about that guy until the very end, right? We'll just kind of multiply it back in at the end, but I want to see what the power series of this is first, right? So I, this guy, I'm just going to put a little blue box around, you know, we'll, he's there, we'll just kind of hold him off. Okay, so now let's just focus on, um, let's focus on that one or two. 2 minus x. Okay. So I want to write this as a power series. Okay. Now, I can't really do that at the moment. One, I mean, it's squared, obviously, at first, right? But even if I try to foil it, right? Again, we can't just do 2 squared minus x squared. Don't do that. Um, but even if I foiled it, I would still have like an x and x squared term. I don't know, it, it just might be a little odd to work with, okay? So what I'm going to do is instead is I'm going to try to, right, this is the second power, right? Let's think about a similar example. With, if it was not 2 minus x, but instead if it was 1 over x squared. If I wanted to get rid of that second power, right, I wanted it to become first power, would I take the derivative or would I integrate? You want to and you want to integrate it actually because we want to right integrating adds to the power and the derivative takes away right so the derivative was taken down to three and then four and then five but it's negative in this case the integral would bring it up it'd be one and then it, well, natural one it, it goes the opposite direction so I, if I integrate this function in this case right this would be negative one over x okay. And you can see that by doing power rule. But of course, this isn't the example we're doing, we're doing it here. So I want to integrate this function in order to get rid of that square. Okay. How do I integrate this function? Three, okay. Let's do a use of. You can, yeah, for. For some, you might just be able to like figure it out. Maybe we'll manipulate the sign a little bit, but let's just be careful here. We'll just do a u sub, right? We'll do u with 2 minus x. And then what's du going to be? Mm -hmm. We get negative dx, or I get negative du with positive dx, whichever way you want to write it. So then this is going to end up being, so then we're going to get equal to, pass through those guys, and negative integral. Uh, 1 over u squared du. Okay. Which this is the same thing as negative integral of u to the negative second power of du. And then when we integrate, I'm going to get, I'm going to add 1 and then divide by the same number. So I'm going to get negative u to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. Or the negative cancel out. 
plus one would suggest one over u we'll see or one over two minus x. We'll see. Okay, makes sense. Are we good so far on that? Okay, and the second grade is so I get this. Now, is this is this one easy to write a power series though? Yes, it is. One will take very long at all, right? <clears throat> However, I have a two here, not a one. I do need a one to be there. So, so we have, so I have one over two minus x, and there's a plus two, of course, which that will be as big as the over four. Hang on to it for now. What do I need to do so to make this into a number one? We'll factor a two. Now, when I factor out a two, I can't just factor it out of here. I have to factor it out of both. I have to factor out of here and I have to factor out of this next. Okay, so I'm going to get one, so I have one half, right? Pull the two out. And I'm going to have one over one minus x over two. Everybody follow with that a little bit. Okay. I understand that um, some of these problems might take a little while, it might, might be a bit harder, but. Of course, being at this point in the course, it's, <laughs> you expect that things are probably going to be pretty, so it would be pretty intense. Um, so, okay, so we have one half times one over one minus x over two. Can I write that as a power series? Yes, we can. What is it? Close. It's not negative x over two, though. It's actually just going to be positive x over two. Right, because it's uh, we want the minus to be there, right? We wanted the minus, and all minuses are already there. So we just do x over two in the end, um, which I'll write as one half. I'll take that end and distribute it, so I get x to the end over two to the end. Okay. Now, of course, I just I don't want to really have anything outside the sum, so let's go ahead. We can bring that one half in. So if I take one half and I multiply it in, what is that two going to do that two, two to the end power? Good. So that is the power and then of course the plus C. Plus C, plus C, plus C, plus C. This is the power series of the answer, right? So if I want the power series of the function, uh, what do I do? We take the derivative now, right? So on that one, we found the power series. Um, we found the power series of the derivative and then integration. Here, we found the power series of the integral, and now we're going to take the derivative. So we're going the opposite direction, okay? So I'll make some room here real fast. Um, it looks like um, I might have split up 11 10 today, which is okay. It's a big section, so it might just be good to do it in a couple parts. But um, for those who, who need it um, soon, I'll make sure to do what you need today. So no need to worry uh, much. Okay. Um, so now we have that. Okay. So if I want the power series of one over. 2 minus x squared, I need to take the derivative of the this, this series I just found. n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over 2 to the n plus 1. Okay. What's the derivative of that plus c? What's the derivative of the plus c? It's 0. Okay. What is the derivative of this inside piece going to be? Right, we're just going to take, we don't need to take the derivative of anything but the first yet. So we're just going to have, so it's going to be over 2 and plus 1, so we're going to take the derivative of x to the n power. What's the derivative of x to the n power? Mm -hmm. Good. So we have nx to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. Okay. Are we done? Did we do it? Are we finished? Uh, 
Ah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> we gotta we we gotta bring back our x squared now, right? From earlier. Okay, but it's really easy at this point. Let's just take x squared and we'll multiply it inside and go here to infinity of in x to the n minus one over two to the x. So if I take that x squared and multiply it inside, what do I get? In x, not to the two n minus one. No, we take n minus one and then add two to it. It's in plus one. Okay, so this is a perfectly valid answer. Um, since I might, since these are both the same power, n plus one and plus one, I might just write this as n times x over two. And that would be yes. But you only take the derivative of the x to the n, why not like this? Okay. What's the derivative? So 2 to the n plus 1, does that have an x in it? No, it's just a constant, right? If I take the derivative of the constant times the function, it's, I just take the derivative of the function itself. So, yeah. So I don't need to worry about it. If the, the n isn't the thing I'm taking the derivative of, it's simply just the x part. Okay, so the n. You know, anything with an n doesn't matter. That's just a constant in my case. Okay. Cool. Anything for me? Well. Cool. Okay. Well, so that's 11.9. Um, again, you can feel free to ask me questions in between. Um, we're going to start 11.10. Don't worry, I'm not going to try to fit all of it in. Because I understand it's, it's a little bit. So I'll do half of it today. I'll do a, a portion of it today, and I'll finish it tomorrow. Along with eleven point eleven, so um, hopefully it shouldn't take too long. But we'll we'll start here at least. So go ahead. You have like another, you have another like five minutes between here. Um, and we'll come back.